2020 changed me in, I think, expectation and appreciation. So 2019, 2018, I had expectations of things I wanted to get done that year of where I thought my career would be, of where my, you know, my life, life plans, life goals would be. So expectation changed. Um, the loss of my daughter obviously changed me a lot. Um, I don't, you know, I don't think I'll ever be quite the same. But on the other side, I'm also, like I said, I'm a lot more grateful. I appreciate things. I appreciate people. Um, I think it made me reevaluate a lot of systems, in particular capitalism. My name is Alex Rance, and I'm the creator of 2020 at Last. Thanks for watching. Like you, towards the end of 2020, I realized what a traumatic year it had been. I am also a storyteller, and I believe in the healing power of stories. So I set out to collect the stories of 2020, the good, the bad, the painful, and the enlightening. This is the result. These are real people, and these are their stories. looked back quite a bit on lessons learned and I think the takeaway message is that we all need to be extremely kind and this is a time when we need to show each other grace um, a lot of us don't most any of us all of us so we don't have all the answers uh, we're all wrestling and going through the same um, you know life-changing event but have faced it in different ways. So I think it has caused me to be much more patient with others um, and extend to them. You know, sometimes when we're driving and very frustrated about the way someone else is driving, um, to just take into account that there is a whole lot of pain and suffering in this world. And, you know, but for basically the upbringing I had, the education I had, um, all the resources that I had, I really feel empowered and um, that it's my responsibility to give back to the community and serve in any way I can. Obviously, a big lesson for me has not been to carry the weight of the world on my shoulders. I think I always try to take on and be a contribution to society, but realizing my own limitations in that process and finding a way to forgive myself when deadlines or even meetings or other things are missed that hey you're just doing the best you can and to be at peace with that every day I grew stronger and more resilient and I was able to access more resources for life whether it was within myself or I found out who was my friend, who are my friends, who was my family. And also I lost the one thing that I do was I advocate for homeless people. And so it made me have to either feel bad about not being able to do certain things anymore or to come up with certain ways to become better in order to do what my heart says I'm supposed to be doing no matter what. So I had to become stronger and grow. I'm I think I've become way well, I don't even want to say that some of the issues that I got really into are politics because they're not, but politics has and standing up for what I believe in has become more of a priority in my life um, to use the privilege that I have to to try to change change things for the better I think would be a big way um, it's also I think helped me realize what's important to me I never really thought of myself as an extrovert but 
being told I can't be around people and working from home and living alone. Um, I've come to appreciate human contact a lot more in 2020, which I feel like that's maybe a given for most people. Um, but I've, I've taken to calling my, my family um, a bit more family that I didn't reach out to, um, like some aunts and stuff. So it's, it's been nice um, in that regard. And I think those are probably the big ways that 2020 has, has changed me for sure. 2020 changed me in, I think, expectation and appreciation. So 2019, 2018, I had expectations of things I wanted to get done that year of where I thought my career would be, of where my, you know, my life, life plans, life goals would be. So expectation changed a lot. I, I, uh, I still have those high expectations. I just understand that it may be a very different time frame and a different way of getting there. As far as appreciation goes, for example, I had a, I had way more um, expectation and into appreciation goes. Um, I look at my I look at the the career for example this this past year I had a lot fewer shoots than I've had in previous years, but the shoots that I had were, uh, I think more recognizable clients and, and better paying shoots. And also um, you just really appreciated being reunited with, with you know, on-screen talent you might've worked with before, whether that be actors or models, um, crew, crew members, production crew members that you hadn't seen in six months to be able to work together again. It, some, you know, maybe something you take for granted any other year and just go from you know production set to production set. Each production set became very special because there was no guarantee we were even going to have that this year. You know, had this had this pandemic gone way worse, we may not have been shooting commercials again in the summertime, you know, and into the fall. So Expectation and appreciation, I think, how I've changed and, and hopefully for the better. I don't take anything for granted. I think that um, every day is a blessing and those relationships are more, far more important than the clothes you wear, the money in your account. Um, Love and family really is important. I hadn't thought about how to change. I mean, it, it, you know, in a sense of what I went through in February with the blood clot in my leg and then breaking off going into my lung. Um, it really makes you appreciate the moment in the day that you have, you know. Um, in fact, it's, it's, it's funny, you know, it's a uh, funny thing that when I was at home and I was about to go back to the hospital, um, I knew something was up and I wrote down a, a very loose leaf last will and testament because I was thinking that maybe it's my time to go. And with that thought in mind, it just made you made me think about appreciating life and and, and and dealing in the moment. Yeah, we plan for the future, but we still deal in the moment. That's what it made me do. Um, the loss of my daughter obviously changed me a lot. Um, I don't, you know, I don't think I'll ever be quite the same. But on the other side, I'm also, like I said, I'm a lot more grateful. Um, I appreciate things. I appreciate people. Um, it's it's like we kind of got back to basics a little bit you're pretty young, I'm older, and kind of brings me back to the days of when I was growing up. We didn't have cable TV, we didn't have cell phones, um, you know, those kind of things. It was just like we went for more walks because, you know, there was nothing else really to do, and we were out in the yard playing more, and you know what I'm saying, things like that. 
Good question. Um, yes, I think it had to have changed me because I, uh, it's this whole COVID-19 and, and people's reaction to it is making me look at the world a little differently. Um, again, I, I know I am very fortunate and, uh, I, you know, yes, we've worked hard to have uh, stability in our lives and, and things like that, but uh, I know darn well I'm darn lucky. Um, so I think it's kind of, it does make you prioritize things a bit. Um, I'm not quite as worried about that bottle of wine as I was, um, but I'm more concerned about having real conversations with our friends, you know. Yeah, don't, tell, don't, don't just blow us off and tell, tell me that you're okay. How are you really? Talk to me. What is your, um, and having to do it via this stuff versus, you know, I can't go over and hug that person and say, okay, you know, that's bullshit. Tell me what you're, how you're really feeling because I can see it on your face or I can hear it in your voice. So I think just the, the challenge of, of doing, figuring out how to do those things the right way. Um, that's probably, besides the actual fear of losing someone near and dear to me that I, I, I love, I guess the next fear is not being there or recognizing the need in someone that I love or care about. And just wanting to do a good job about that and, and being incredibly grateful for what we have. Well, I, I, I guess the, the sort of easy answer for that, probably for a large set, you know, group of the populace would be that, you know, appreciating what you have, um, sort of gaining a perspective on things. But I think in my case, and I, I certainly don't mean it in an arrogant way at all, but I've always had a pretty genuine appreciation for the day to day. I mean, I'm you know, I'm from a large close-knit family, um, grew up with virtually nothing. Um, so I've always sort of been the type to um, take stock of, you know, on every day and just enjoy the journey where, you know, the routine transactions that are part of your day, whether that's, you know, grabbing a coffee in a convenience store or, you know, a high level meeting. I really do try um, to join the meeting. I, that being said, I mean, I will say that I will say, even for someone like me, that it, it heightened it, no question about it. I mean, as I said, when it first started, I mean, coming face to face with something that truly could kill you and people that are close to you um, is an eye opener. I don't care how well adjusted you are. I don't care how um, stable uh, family, you know, um, marriage you know, or, I mean, that is a eye opening and, you know, kind of scary thing. Yeah, it definitely has. It, I'm not even sure I can fully appreciate all of the ways. I think another strategy that I've turned to during this time is gratitude and just, just trying to really notice all of the things I have to be thankful for. And there are a lot. I mean, we have health care. We had throughout the struggle, we had support from people and a refrigerator full of groceries. So I think my gratitude has deepened. So that's, that's a really good thing that's come out of this. But I think like I just... I think I see like life and experiences um, just as more ephemeral now and that um, like that we're really not, that we're not promised anything and that like I think in this country that we think that we're immune to a lot of things and to, to some of the, to a lot of the suffering that the rest of the world experiences. And this time has been extraordinary for that, for that reason. I, th I think for me and for a lot of people, it's a real wake up call. Um, I think it made me reevaluate a lot of systems in particular capitalism. So I, have seen 
a lot of things from friends and from family members that I think sort of feed into this toxic capitalist work culture that America has uh, really refined. (laughs) And it's been interesting that it's really kind of come forward um, how that is just, you know, it's it's, uh, harmful to people because I've had discussions with some friends who are like, well, we need to get the economy back open. We need to send people back to work because we can't have them rely on public assistance. And it's like, okay, but what if these people take care of family members who are elderly? What if they have pre-existing conditions? You are basically okay with making the choice for people to put them in harm's way while you sit back and you work from home. <laughs> like, it's like, and I'm just like this you know, the fact that there are so many people in my life that are advocating for this sort of work culture where, you know, you work no matter what, you work even though it's dangerous. It's sort of, I think, revealed to me this underbelly of beliefs that a lot of Americans hold. And that kind of got me to reevaluate, you know, how our system is so structured and how our values are so structured around capitalism and productivity and what would it look like if they weren't and what would it look like if my values weren't. 